Hi, I'm Laurie Brown. Joshua, Ty, and myself are really gratified to see the new patrons that have joined us in the last couple weeks. Thanks to Leslie and Anne and Doug and Michael and Laurel and Ara for supporting us with a small monthly donation at patreon.com slash pondercast. There is no better time to start supporting the creative work you listen to. Every kind of artist really needs your support now. So thank you. And we're hoping that the work that we do here supports you. So let's ponder cast. During this great pause, which is a great name, and I don't know who came up with it, but it's wonderful, we at PonderCast have been putting out grounding thoughts, which are kind of like uh, mini PonderCast episodes, only written specifically to address what's coming up right now during this pandemic, as we distance ourselves from so much of what makes life great. Finding comfort when the overwhelming unknowns pile up is what grounding thoughts are for. They're for when you need to take a break from it all and just be. We're all struggling along to figure out what self-care looks like right now, how to manage our stress, and other people's too. It seems that every phone call to a friend or family reveals some new awful consequence of COVID-19. Everyone has something difficult that they are now dealing with. Everyone. So let me pull back moments and feelings we all know give us comfort. And when I say feelings, I guess I mean sensations. Because in every experience pleasurable or not, we tend to forget that our whole bodies experience them. And if we truly want to call up a memory, remember anything fully, we have to include what it felt like in our body to make it truly real for us. So what you have ahead of you is a, a visceral ponder cast for experiences, comforting ones, that Joshua and I recreate for you as faithfully as we can. So get comfortable. This whole COVID-19 experience feels like one giant trip on the sidewalk. You know, when you are walking along, thinking about whatever, looking everywhere but at your feet, and you suddenly hit an uneven bit in the concrete and it trips you up. And for a microsecond, you haven't a fucking clue what's going on in the world. The ground is not where it's supposed to be. For that brief second, you fall into the void of not knowing anything anymore. And it's amazing how that tiny situation can throw off your whole day. Well, dealing with all the changes this virus has wrought is like one giant slow motion trip on the sidewalk. How do we find our balance? when we feel like we're falling. That's what Grounding Thoughts is all about, and I want to be here for you then. So let me make you a cup of tea. Everything is changing so fast, but this ritual of tea stays the same. It sounds the same, the sound of the kettle, the smell of the tea, the warmth of the mug in your hands, the sound of the spoon, the heat traveling down through your chest to warm your stomach, that doesn't change. And you sit with a mug in your hands in your chair and you feel what it is to stop. 
and the only thing that is happening in the world in that moment is you in a chair drinking tea. How many cups of tea over how many centuries, how many times has that scenario happened in the world? I never really understood the sit down, I'll make you a cup of tea when someone was upset thing. I mean, I'd see it in the movies, old Brit movies mostly, and my mother-in-law would say it. In any stressful situation, the offer of tea pops up. But I started doing it when my kids were about nine or ten. When they were upset, frustrated, they would come flying in the door from school, railing against the world, and probably me, and I would say, let me get you a cup of tea. And they would resist at first, saying, a cup of tea's not gonna fix anything. But then they'd sit and get served. And then we would talk, and they would drink their sweet tea. And the whole tone of the conversation would start to change. They talked, I listened, I asked questions, and then we could both start to feel the anxious energy in the room drain away, replaced by comfort, caring, listening, seeing the big picture again. If I was there with you, I would get up and make you a cup of tea. I've heard from some of you about missing human touch. 
about what it will feel like to get a hug again. And I have a memory of a hug that I want to pass on to you. It's the best kind of hug, and I wish you could feel it too. Here we go. I am four years old, and my father is carrying me. And it must be a Saturday because he is wearing his favorite old gray sweatshirt. And my close-up view, with my head lying on his shoulder, is the frayed edge of the gray ribbing around the neckline, where his beard has worn it away from his pulling it on and off a thousand times. And it is so soft. I can feel my eyelashes touching the sweatshirt. I can smell my father's neck and his shaving cream. And he's carrying me somewhere. I don't know where, and I don't care. I just want to stay where I am in his arms. And as he walks, his movements lull me into a half-sleep. He moves randomly around, and I have no resistance to his changes in direction. I have glued myself to his chest, legs dangling, half wrapped around his waist. His arms hold me so naturally. I feel so safe. And he's talking to me as we walk. And the sound of his voice through his chest, past his skin and sweatshirt, straight into my ear, pressed against his shoulder and neck, is all I could ever want. The touch, the sound, the warmth, the smell, the sweet surrender of falling into his arms. How do we get through this? How do we find ways to keep our heart rate down, keep the worst case scenarios from piling up in our head? How do we take care of ourselves by ourselves, each in our own little bubble? I don't know whether you have a bathtub or not, but retreating to the bathtub is what I wish for you. Because you are being fed slowly through an emotional ringer. One moment thinking, this is going to be okay, I'm going to be okay. And then the next, you feel that flicker of rising panic as isolation rules tighten. Getting food seems to have taken over your life. Money, worries about money, they come at you in waves. And every one of us is caught in that same tightening swirl. So let's uncoil. Let me run you a bath. You sit here and I'll call you when it's ready.
Okay, come on up. The bath is ready for you. I remember Richard Reed Perry telling me that this is how he loves to listen to music, just immersed in a super hot bath. Actually, there is an artist whose music will help you right now. Listen to Quiet River of Dust, Volume 1 and 2. I totally get what he means. When you lower yourself into a bath, your brain is forced to take a back seat. That inner voice gets muffled, drowned out, because all of a sudden you are out of your head and back into your body. Feeling every inch of your skin, feeling it come alive again, your brain waves soften and flatten out, you open up and relax downwards, you feel the heaviness of your body in the water, you feel the water hold you, every inch of you, and that hot water makes muscles start to let go. And it's at this moment that you get a first glimpse of just how tense and stressed out you've been for hours. Now you call your brain into action and will the rest of you to let go even more. And you pull the hot face cloth up over your face and you breathe in the steamy air. Nothing has changed in the world, but you have. Is it just warmth and comfort that's done it here in the bath, or something else? Your brain has reconnected with your body, and you are in the moment that is truly happening. What a world. We've had to cut the ties of almost every outside service we had contracted to make our lives easier. Daycare, dry cleaning, the gym, dentist, hairdresser, it's all gone. It's like we're in an episode of Survivor Man, only still in the middle of civilization, scrambling to become more self-sufficient trying to protect ourselves from an invisible threat. It's bizarre and frightening and real. When I think about how I felt about the idea of isolation before COVID-19, isolation meant being in a cabin in the woods or at a lake far away from people. And in that cabin, there had to be a fireplace. Having an access to fire feels like the cornerstone to feeling okay with isolation. And feeling okay for a few moments is what I wish for you. So let me build you a fire. You sit there and wrap yourself in this blanket. When you are Netflix blurry, when the computer screen has shown you too much, step away. We'll have a fire. 
Feel the warmth grow on the bottoms of your socked feet. And let the flames hold your gaze. The blue, the orange, the yellow. Watch it spark and glow. And the smell, the smell of wood smoke. Even just the smell can make your shoulders drop. There is nothing to do or say. You stare at the flame and let the fire hold you. Fire is light, warmth, safety. This feeling is deep in our DNA. That fire will keep the wild animals away from your door. It will cook your food. It will heat your water. It will keep you alive. Let this moment be enough for now. All you need to do is keep your eye on the fire. Tend it. Feed it. It will warm you and keep you safe. There, I send comfort to you. Be kind to yourself. There is no right way and no wrong way to feel about all of this. This is new territory for all of us. Take care. <laughs>